Hey everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome back to another infection video. We've had a number of questions asked by students on our earwax removal course about sucking out infectious debris. Why do we do it? And the, the reason is, and it's in the NICE guidelines where if somebody has a Titus externa and you can see that the ear is filled with debris, you should perform oral toilet, which basically means to clear the ear out thereby making antimicrobial therapy like otomize, for example, more effective. But why? Uh, one of the reasons, and it's a very interesting reason, is biofilm. So what is biofilm? Well, I'm pleased to say that pretty much everyone watching, in fact, 100% of everyone watching this video, you will have biofilm in you or on you because that's what plaque is on your teeth. And what it is, is a colony of bacteria. So if we think about bacteria that cause disease, and this is not unique to the, to the ear, by the way, biofilm, but if you think about bacteria that cause disease, they're very rarely kind of like individual lone rangers that are milling around. They tend to form colonies, and when they do, they exude this sort of slime or gel, and it's, it's, which is kind of similar to the mucus that you'd find in humans. So the, the, the biofilm's made up of sugar molecules and proteins, or polysaccharides and proteins. And the reason they do this is because it helps them be successful. Um, so the, believe it or not, when bacteria are in a biofilm, they can share food, they can share resources like water and, and so on. They can even share genetic information, which helps them become resistant and uh, fascinatingly, they can, uh, they can produce like proteins, like chemical signals, like our cells do, like the, the cytokines of our cells, and they can communicate with each other in that biofilm. And of course, it helps them stick to whatever they're colonizing on. So all in all, it is, is a bad thing. And if you've ever worked in, you know, care or like a, a, an acute setting like a hospital, and you've ever seen like a leg ulcer or an infected wound, you may see that there's... Um, what, what doctors or nurses often describe as sluffy debris. There is sluffy debris or slough in the wound, and that's, you know, pus and exudate, and obviously biofilm. And that's, that has to be removed um, to allow the wound to heal. Because again, biofilm also acts as a very convenient shield. It protects the bacteria from antimicrobial therapy. So, you know, if you have an ear that's full of soggy dead skin and bacteria love to eat soggy dead skin and colonize on then you know it stands to reason hence why the nice guidelines say that you should perform oral toilet it stands to reason that when you if you just chuck otomize in there there's a good chance that you may have a quiescent period which means that the symptoms kind of get a little bit better but there's a good chance that that infection will return again and again and again until oral toilet is performed so, and, and we see many, many cases in the clinic uh, where, where people have this kind of chronic otitis external, just the infection just comes back over and over and they just can't shake it. And then we, we, we spend quite a bit of time kind of meticulously cleaning away all of the dead skin and stuff like that. Uh, and then we send them to the GP again for otomize and then everything tends to settle down. So... Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating area of science, um, you know, uh, how bacteria thrive and, and uh, colonize in this biofilm. And thankfully, it's not too difficult to suction. And, and uh, I know this kind of looks intricate because I'm near the eardrum and there's this kind of flap of skin and so on. But I have to say, infection is often a lot easier to remove than stubborn earwax. In fact, it's much, it's much more enjoyable, much easier to remove than, than having to dig out hard wax. Because most of the time, it just kind of sloops up into the zona probe. And it's all because it's already wet and soggy, you know, it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to remove this last piece of dead skin here. And we should achieve full clearance. Th this kind of sheet of dead skin here is, is kind of covering the eardrum. And incidentally, this is probably one of the reasons why a Titus externa is, is uh, I suppose, a problem in terms of the whole biofilm argument, because again, when the skin is infected, the basal layer of the skin or stratum basale, um, you, what, what you have is during the inflammatory process where there's 
chemicals like cytokines flying around everywhere, that will cause the, skin, the cells to rapidly divide. So you have rapid cell turnover, which means that more skin will shed into the ear. And of course, in a very short period of time, that can't migrate out properly. So what you have is an ear that's kind of producing the, the one thing that bacteria love, soggy dead skin. Um, so we're, we're nearing the end of the procedure here, but I hope that kind of clears up um, any questions you had about why we suck out infectious debris. Now, obviously, if there's a perforation there or, or, or you know, lesions like canal cholesteatoma or granulation, then that's a totally different matter and that needs to be handled with extreme caution and, and ENT need to be involved. But when it's just an, an inflamed ear, kind of like that, filled with, you know, sluffy debris, then we tend to advise that students, um, once they're experienced and once they're kind of up, up to speed, they do have a go at suctioning it. So there we go. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video. And if you want to do what I do and train with me in endoscopic earwax removal, then head to DurhamHearingSpecialists.com forward slash training.